that's in the Eaton Boating song. With our bodies between our knees. Mm. I rest my case. We certainly had lots of drugs in our system because we were out last night and we had buckets of alcohol uh, and that worked against us. So there's a lesson for the kids, eh? If you, if you take your rowing seriously. very cosy. This is generally really, really cosy. Why is it, actually, that one of the great things about boating and the whole thing is actually when you've closed yourself in, you know, you think this is great. You're so vulnerable. You're in the middle of nature. You're on water. But you feel safer here than you do in your own bed. Oh, Listen to that. In the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. It is quite quiet, actually. That's the other thing that's going to disturb me. I have the tube train running directly under my house and I can't really sleep without the rumble of the tube. Would you like me to do the tube train noises for you? <laughs> no, now I'm just going to do race car noises now. And unless you live in Donington Park, you know, it's not going to get you to sleep. It's on its way to Warren Street. Bloody hell, that's all we need. Church bleeding bells. Oh. <laughs> chewing gum stops. <laughs> this is good, the chewing gum's in my hair. <laughs> Places not to get chewing gum is in my hair. <laughs> so I, I've, I've been sleeping here all night and I put my chewing gum, as you up there, it's fallen onto my head. And now this is going to be gee. Who knows what else is in there? Because I've been camping for however many days it is, and I haven't washed my hair that much. This is now a serious problem. Well, I'll put that in my mouth. And also, what you don't realise until you've tried it is what a very attractive place a tent is for earwigs. This is earwig heaven. Well, this is the last morning. We're at somewhere called Clifton Hampton. You can see it on the map. You can see exactly where we are, because it's marked there by a little black caravan. In fact, to be strictly accurate, they should mark it by about 150 little black caravans. And there's a sort of etiquette of camping which we didn't really understand, because I'm new to camping, so you just wander around and you sort of automatically just look at other at other tents, you know, as you walk around, you just sort of peer. And I was peering in there and found myself looking at a, a large middle-aged woman getting dressed. Anyway, she, to have a sort of rural little, they'd let chickens wander around. Either that or somebody's brought their chickens on holiday with them. Jerome K. Jerome describes Clifton Hamden as a wonderfully pretty village, old-fashioned, peaceful and dainty. And little has changed in its appearance since the book was written. Mind you, he says that if you stay the night, you cannot do better than the barley mow. I'd like to have tested him on this, but the barley mow, sadly, no longer lets rooms. Hence, another night in a rainy campsite. Would you look at the house? People actually, these things actually exist? That's amazing. Who lives in a house? Who the hell lives in a house like that? Lives in a postcard. It's mad. It's very pretty, but Jesus, I get that constantly. Running around underneath the boards all the time. And the hedge for a roof? Slate, for God's sake. Modern, modern materials. Decent brickwork. Look at that thing. You lean on that the wrong way, the whole thing will go. Look at that. See these benches here? For all the crowds, you just sit here and look at the house. Would you look at the house? Oh, would you look at the house? But you look at it. Well, it's the final leg of the journey, and with the lure of sleeping in our own beds tonight, we've discovered new enthusiasm. From here, it's two hours to Abingdon, then another ten or so miles on our final pull up to Oxford. Piece of cake. 
we're moving into Abingdon now. Uh, he's not nice about Abingdon, Jerome. Uh, I'll read you it. At Abingdon, the river passes by the streets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Abingdon is a typical country town of the smaller order, quiet, eminently respectable, clean and desperately dull. <laughs> In St. Helen's Church, it is recorded that W. Lee, who died in 1637, had in his lifetime issued from his loins 200 lacking but three. Well, I hope there are not many of his kind about in this overcrowded 19th century. Superb. Isn't it great? This overcrowded 19th century. Uh, we, we're going to duck in here, I presume, are we? Are we going to have a look That's the church. That's the church, is it? I believe so. The mathematics is spelled out a bit too much in the book. It's something to do with 17th century people knowing what 200 was rather than what 197 was in an innumerate age. Hello. 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 We are um, three men on a boat, less one. Less one. Mm -hmm. uh, this what, one. Yes, one, yes, yes, we're only two men on a boat, actually. The other one yeah, is... Yeah, same. Thicker, but, what, what, what is the term for this? What is the term for this? I've, I've no idea. Michael. 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 Hello, Michael. <laughs> but that's not generally going to work, by the way. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> we're just following in the footsteps of Jerome K. Jerome. Indeed. You want to see Mr. Lee's... Mr. Lee's Mr. memorial. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, we're having to keep pace with Dara here. Is, um, I'm so, yeah, do you do... do, you, do you, <laughs> suffering can you heal? <laughs> um, <laughs> can you lay oh, on our hands? This is the famous oh, Mr. Lee, who had three wives. Yes. And uh, these are all his descendants. Now, now how, how many generations are we talking? This three generations. Uh, three generations, right. so his great-grandchildren. Great, great grandchildren and you can see it tells you all about yeah. it. The all progeny about it. or offspring of William Lee of Abingdon. Children, 17. Um, grandchildren, 78. Great-grandchildren, <laughs> 102. Yes. In all, 197. No yeah. one has really put as much backbone into it uh, as Mr. Lee seemed to have. Yeah. He really... This is a real family tree. Yes, indeed. Do you have any parishioners <laughs> at the moment who are, are contributing to the population at such a scale? Well, not a scale, not a such a scale. No. No. Yeah, How old is the church itself? I mean, there's been a church on the site since about 750. You're in the second widest parish church in the country. It's terrific. Pillars, a lot of pillars. Lo yeah, a lot of pillars. Forest. Reduce, reduce, forest reduce visibility seating. Indeed. Right. Yes, are, they, are they cheaper, the tickets? for the <laughs> We've just done a redesign to, to, to cope with the pillars. Right. <laughs> Do you get any Jerome K. Jerome tourists? Are we... Uh, Not, no, no, you're, you're notable for being Jerome K. Jerome. Well, prepare <laughs> yourself, because after What's we've been on the there? television... Obviously, no. there'll be there'll be many, many following in our footsteps. Well, we look, we can, look forward to I that. I can give you a card for an agent in London just to field the calls. Right. Shall we gather at the river where bright angel feet have trod with its crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of God? Yes, we'll gather at There is an absolute lesson in the difference between me and Rory. Hello. Hello! <laughs> For lunch today, I'm rather hoping my mate Bob is going to supply us with fresh food. Bob is a one-man version of the Spanish fishing fleet. He's attempting to overfish the Thames on a mission to eradicate an unwanted immigrant, the American crayfish. How long have you known Bob? What? How long? I've known Bob... Ooh, cool. Not as long as Rory. It was Rory who introduced me to Bob. Well, so he's an old friend of the two of you. He is, yeah. And now he happens to be the man in charge of clearing 40 miles of river. Yes. Of crayfish. Of yeah. That's not him right there. Is it? Bob! You brought your pet swans with you. Hello, boys. <laughs> hello. Say hello. Morning. Morning. Another crayfish. Let us yeah. introduce you Morning. to... Morning, Morning. Dara Bob, how are you? Hi, Dara. Dara. I've been hearing about you for a while now. Yeah. How's the work going? It's going well, thank you. This is a different area for me, and it's just another area which is absolutely teeming with these crayfish. So, Bob, how, how do you lure them in? What, what bait do you use? Well, today I'm using black pudding and ham. <laughs> black pudding and <laughs> black pudding. Quality pudding. black pudding. <laughs> how many of them are American and how many of them are...? They're all American, aren't you guys? They don't exist, the native crayfish, where these guys do, because these guys carry a disease which they're immune to, but our guys aren't. So, so, they, uh, so they're killing off the... Uh, they, the, basically, the anywhere where you find these, and they are, they're spreading all over the place. Who's that the one country? man, the one man who will stop this infestation? I...